Oh my god, I have been feeling terrible recently. Genuinely, just blocked nose, coughing, sore throat. Really not great, but it's not COVID, it's just the flu. I feel like it's that time of year. But today we're doing the top 10 Android apps of October for 2022, and I have some pretty awesome apps installed on my device right here to show you guys. So let's just go ahead and jump straight into it. I am really liking my home screen right now. I really like this electric red sort of wallpaper with the mountains, and I've got these dot matrix icons, which are from one of the apps in the list, so stick around and find out which app that is. But the first app on the list is Orbit for KWGT. So in the past few months, I've always sort of shown off these widget pack add-ons for KWGT, and Orbit is now the one that I'm using. It's the one I have on my home screen here, so this clock right here, as well as this search bar with the sort of map of the world, as well as a picture of Saturn, and that's the Google logo right there. So yeah, this is all from Orbit. A lot of people have been asking me like, how do you get the freaking search bar like that? You know, Orbit, that's how you get it like that. So I am using Nova Launcher, but Orbit is filled with a bunch of beautiful looking widgets. So you have calendar widgets, search bar widgets. There's even these like quick, quick toggle tiles like you have on Android 13. There is a lot of really nice looking widgets in here. So there's dark ones, light ones, they're all sort of monotone themed, but they're all based around planets and space. And yeah, they're just really, really clean. And this is a paid application, but your boy will be giving away some free promo codes over on my Instagram. So if you wanna check out my Instagram page, I will be posting on my story. People always spam me with DMs asking for codes and I do give codes sometimes, but I don't have that many, but go follow me and I will give you guys a code. But yeah, if you just want to jazz up your home screen, Orbit is a pretty cool app to check out. App number two is Dynamic Spot. So many people have been talking about the Dynamic Island, and now you can get a similar feature on Android, and this is actually in the Play Store, unlike a lot of other apps that people have mentioned. So within this app, just go ahead and press start at the top, turn on your notifications, and you can actually go ahead and customize this dynamic island as well. So you can actually change the dimensions, the color, the appearance, and how long it actually pops up for. So as you saw there, it pops up at the top. It kind of emerges from that dot in the middle of my screen, which is the camera cutout, but it does let you change the position of the dynamic island. So you could technically have it to the left or to the right to match up with your hole punch cutout. But one of my favorite features is when you're actually playing music. So if I just go play some music, I don't really want to play on full volume because I'm going to get copyright striked. But if I play music, as you can see, that little dynamic island up there looks kind of similar to on the iPhone. And you can actually go ahead and hold down on it and it will pop up into a sort of big widget up at the top there, exactly like on the iPhone. So really, really cool. They brought this over to Android. I personally really dig it. I like it a lot. It is kind of a bit copycat, but who cares? It looks cool. App number three is Rita. So if you guys ever wondered how much money Google has actually made from selling your data, well, now you can find out. This app actually logs into your Google account, and I know it sounds a bit dodgy, but it is safe and verified in the Play Store, and it will go ahead, get your data from Google, that's all it has permission to do, and then it will actually work out how much they've sold that data for, and how much profit Google's actually made from just from selling it. And you can go inside this app and also revoke permissions, so if you don't want specific people to have access to that data, you can remove it, or there's even the option inside of here to sell to specific companies. So if you wanna sell your data to Uber, you can go ahead and do that within this app. But it's basically a super simple app. It's just really, really mesmerizing, super interesting to see just how much money Google makes from each individual person. It's kind of crazy to think. At number four is Air Message. So recently I spent some time away from my iPhone before I switched over to the new iPhone 14 Pro Max. And so I found it a bit difficult to go about my day without iMessage. So I found this app right here and it works by turning your Mac into a server. So you need to install Air Message on your Mac. But once you've done that, you log into both and then it syncs across all your iMessages over to your Android device. So now you have this app here. So the app looks really clean basically very similar to iMessage in terms of how it looks. But yeah, you just go ahead and send a message and boom, it sends it through iMessage and your person on the other end with an iPhone will receive it. So yeah, that's all it does. It emulates iMessage on Android, but it's a pretty hard thing to do. So the fact this app does it with ease is actually really nice. There's no complex setup and you can send photos, images, you can even react to messages 
and it has the option to FaceTime built in, which is kind of crazy. So yeah, error message, go check it out. So app number five on the list is Anchor. So I started a podcast recently. If you have any suggestions for podcast topics or ideas, let me know in the comments down below. But Anchor is a way of hosting those podcasts. So it's made by Spotify and it basically runs an RSS feed for you and you can upload and edit your podcast, add various sound effects, and you can share it to Google Podcasts as well as Apple Podcasts. So really, really nice way of managing your podcast streams. And there's also an analytics section. So you can actually view who listened to your podcast, not specifically, but you can see the gender, the age group, you can see roughly where people in the world are listening to your podcast and how many people listened to each episode. So overall, a really great manager, podcast editor, and distributor, all in one made by Spotify which is uh, this app Anchor. So yeah, go check it out. App number six on the list is called Basket. And this is a way of getting all of the things you want online into one single basket. So you can go ahead and watch in case there's a price drop. So yeah, this app, it allows you to share items from Amazon or any other website online into this app. And then you can add them together into a list and you can see if there's any price drops. It will actually alert you if the price changes, which is pretty nice. So if you want to keep an eye on any specific item, I'm actually pretty keen on getting a case for my 14 Pro Max and possibly interested in the new AirPods if the price drops. So I've added them into this list right here and it just goes ahead and monitors them. That's all it really does. So app number seven on the list is Mockup. And this is pretty essential for any app developers out there or really anyone who wants to make a clean looking screenshot. This app right here takes your screenshots, puts them into templates and displays them rather beautifully. So if you wanna update your listing for the Play Store or the App Store and improve some better screenshots, you just jump in here, choose templates. You can choose any iOS app template or an Android app template. And then you just import your screenshots and it makes them look all beautiful and professional like any of the big apps out there like Spotify or Facebook or YouTube. Any of those screenshot previews they have for the app, you can make it look exactly like that even if you're a small developer. So. Uh, so yeah, this is a pretty cool app to check out. App number eight on the list is called Flush. This one's maybe not so nice or aesthetic or anything to do with your device per se, but it can be handy at times. If you ever been out in public and you need the bathroom, but there's like no public bathrooms and it's maybe late on at night or the timing is kind of weird and so there's no store open and so there's nowhere to go to the bathroom, well, you can actually use this app Flush and it will tell you every single location around you in which you can find the restroom. So if you need to wash your hands or go to the bathroom, just jump in this app. It will tell you exactly all the free public toilets and the times in which they are open. That's pretty much all it does, but it's it's literally a lifesaver. It's, it's really a lifesaver. <laughs> so the next app up is called Obstruct, and this is a wallpaper app. So I've just applied this wallpaper on my home screen. I really like the look of these wallpapers. They're kind of abstract and, and strange looking, honestly, but I kind of dig them. They are very colorful and they consist of very strange shapes and dynamics and objects. There's kind of these floating balls within like a vacuum or within a gradient wallpaper. And yeah, they're just, I don't even know how to describe them, but this is how they look. And I can honestly say they're, they're nice. They're honestly really nice. They remind me of sort of one plus, especially this one here with, with literally the one plus in it. Um, I think that was the inspiration, but, but yeah, just some really nice, beautiful wallpapers in here. And you can actually get some one plus wallpapers as well as AO spell wallpapers. And there's some other ones, but just, just go check it out. It's a cool wallpaper app. Link will be down below. Finally, the last app on the list is nothing. So nothing is an icon pack inspired by the Nothing phone. So there's these dot matrix icons that you can apply to your home screen. And this is how they look. They look very clean, very simple, and they're all in the same color. They have this dark round icon with the dot matrix pattern inside of it. So I kind of like them. They don't have quite enough icons to cover all of the apps in my device, but pretty much the basics, which are on my home screen, it does cover. So yeah, I can say they look really nice, really clean. I'm just a little bit bored of the standard icons, so I kind of decided to switch them out. And something else really nice is inside this app, there's a wallpaper section with some really, really cool nothing inspired wallpapers with all this little black and white patterns and also some birds and stuff as well. So yeah, cool app nonetheless. There are my 10 apps for the month. God, I hope I feel better for the next video because I, I literally feel really, really crap right now. Um, but yeah, and, and something that's really nice that links in with the icon pack is my skin. So this is a skin called the Everything Skin. 
made by Hardik Suthar, and it's a slick wrap skin, so I did a full dedicated video on this, but I really like it. It looks so meant to be on the Pixel. It really does feel like part of the phone, it doesn't feel like a skin at all. But uh, yeah, that's my, uh, that's my top apps. I will see you guys later. Peace.